Okay, in my original video where I discussed this problem, I actually went through the leftmost compound right here and explained why it has an S configuration. If you guys would like to know what the configurations are of these two compounds in the middle and to the right, pay attention and I'll show you right now. Okay, let's take a look at this first problem. We've got our stereo center right here. We want to identify or determine if it is R or S. We'll go out to each individual atom that's bonded to this central tetrahedral carbon and rank it according to atomic number. I go out to a hydrogen, an oxygen, a carbon, and a carbon. Who has the highest atomic number of those four? Well, the oxygen, so he's going to be the highest priority. Who has the lowest? The hydrogen, so he's going to be the lowest priority. Carbon and carbon tie, so I have to go out one more atom until I break the tie. This carbon to the left is bound to hydrogens. This carbon to the right is bound to oxygens. Oxygen has a higher atomic number than hydrogens, which means that this, that this whole branch is second highest in priority, followed by this one, which is number three. Uh, number three. <clears throat> now we have to determine what direction, if I'm tracing a circle going from one to two to three, is that circle going? Clockwise or counterclockwise? If it's going clockwise, then that is the direction I would turn my car steering wheel if I were turning right, and it would be R. If it's going counterclockwise, that is the direction I would turn my steering wheel if I were turning left or sleft, and hence it would be S. So I'll go ahead and write that as a reminder. Clockwise equals R, counterclockwise equals S. The one rule that we have to remember, however, is we have to imagine what this circle would look like going from one to two to three if we were staring at this molecule from an angle from which number four would be three-dimensionally pointing away from us. Now that might be kind of tricky, but number four is not three-dimensionally pointing away from us, unfortunately in this case, it's pointing straight up in the plane of this board. So you have to imagine if I were to grab number four and turn it like I'm holding a bouquet of flowers so that groups one, two, and three were pointing towards us three-dimensionally and group four were pointing away from us. Another way of imagining it is to imagine what you would see if you were an eyeball staring underneath the crotch of this tripod. If you were doing that, this group four would indeed be pointing three-dimensionally away from you. And you have to ask yourself, what would you see? Well, tracing from one to two to three in that scenario would actually be counterclockwise. So this molecule is indeed S. Now, if you have a hard time seeing that, you're welcome to build a three-dimensional model using a model kit or using some marshmallows and toothpicks until you can clearly see that going from one to two to three with group four pointing away from you does indeed trace counterclockwise and gives you an S configuration. Now we'll attack the second molecule in the same manner. I've got my stereo center right here, also called a chiral center. It's attached to a nitrogen, a carbon, a hydrogen, and a carbon. Nitrogen has the highest atomic number, so it's priority group number one. Hydrogen has the lowest, so it's priority group number four. Carbon and carbon tie, so I have to go out one more atom to break the tie. This one is triply bound to nitrogen. This carbon is bound to hydrogens. Nitrogen has a higher atomic number than hydrogens, which means that this group over here has priority number two, while this group has priority, uh, sorry, priority number three. <clears throat> In this case, priority group number four is pointing three-dimensionally towards us. Now I realize if we trace a circle going from one to two to three, it looks like it's counterclockwise, so you might be tempted to think that's S. But once again, remember that group four is pointing three-dimensionally towards us. We have to imagine or see what the circle would look like if group number four were pointing away from us. In other words, if we were staring at this molecule from the other side of this wall, what direction would the circle going from one to two to three be? Well, as you can hopefully see, it indeed would be clockwise, which means that this stereo center is R. In my previous video, linked to here, I explained to you uh, the individual configurations of these stereo centers. I will now explain to you, if you're interested in knowing, what the configurations are of these two stereo centers and these two compounds, as well as why. In this question, we've been asked to determine if the molecule to the left and the molecule to the right are enantiomers or are indeed the same molecule just drawn in a slightly different convoluted way. As we saw in the previous example when I just did this a few minutes ago, this molecule has an R configuration. Now, I understand that enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images. In other words, if I drew this molecule's reflection 
over here to the right, that reflection would indeed be a non-superimposable mirror image and those two guys would be an antimers. You'll notice, however, that the molecule to the right is not drawn with all of the groups pointing in the same direction. This could be the enantiomer of this molecule, or it could be the same molecule where we've just twisted it around and moved it around and flopped it down there onto the board. So how in the world do you determine that? Well, one way is if you have the ability in your brain to just see it, and uh, I don't really have the ability to do that super, super fast. The other way, and this is the way that I would suggest for most of us mere mortals, is determine if this stereocenter right here is R or S. If it's S, then that means this molecule that means that it's the opposite of this one. And this molecule is indeed the enantiomer. If this stereocenter happens to be R, then that means it's the exact same molecule that's just been twisted or manipulated around and thrown down. Let's determine if it actually is. So I look at the stereocenter and I go out to each of the four groups bound to it. It's got a carbon, a carbon, a nitrogen, a hydrogen. Nitrogen has the highest atomic number, which means it's priority group number one. Hydrogen's the lowest, it's priority group number four. Carbon, carbon tie, so I go out to break the tie. This goes to hydrogen, this goes to nitrogen. Nitrogen breaks the tie, which means it's priority group number two. This is priority group number three. Now, I have to make sure that priority group number four is pointed three-dimensionally away from me. In this particular case, it actually is, as indicated by this uh, dashy bond means that it's pointing away from us. So I go from one to two to three, and you'll notice that that traces a circle, I'll go ahead and draw this out, that is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is the direction I'd turn my wheel on my car if I were turning sleft, which means that this is indeed an S configuration. This molecule is a carbon bound to the exact same four things as this one, except the molecule to the right is an S, the molecule to the left is an R, which means they are indeed enantiomers.